Office 707, Mr. B here with a tomato update. Uh, again, like in my pepper update, sorry that it had been so long since I've done a video. It's just been really busy, and uh, I think it's been about six weeks, and the garden's gone bonkers. Uh, the tomatoes this year, uh, as you saw in my other videos, I, I single and double stemmed them up strings, and I built a, a seven foot, well, eight foot lattice um, that I've ran the strings down, and uh, basically from the dirt uh, dirt level up at seven feet uh, and you can see right here that they've pretty much reached the top of that seven footer uh, where I'll kind of go over here some of them are probably about ten feet tall. Uh, that that bar is seven feet up uh, from the dirt I mean you can look right over here <clears throat> that's a two by two by two by eight so the very bottom of the ground is eight foot top of the my raised bed is uh, another 14 inch or 16 inches up, 15 inches up. Dirt's down a couple inches from that, so, and I measured. From that dirt to the top is seven feet. <clears throat> so, they've done good. These were all done by seed this year, all organically. Uh, liquid seaweed, uh, azomite rock powder, a uh, little bone meal in the, in the soil, and weekly compost tea applications uh make my own compost in the composter uh make my own compost tea i've been promising to do a video on that which i have not done yet and i apologize for that but hopefully we'll get one of those done soon here too just uh, been really busy lately but so this is the golden sunray variety these seeds were purchased from uh rareseeds.com or the petaluma seed bank which is about only about 10 miles from here. We just went there the other over the weekend and bought some more seeds for the fall. But this looks like it has just been an excellent variety. I'll go around the back side of the uh, plants too to show you. But uh, I mean, it's just got some heavy clusters of really nice looking tomatoes. Sorry about my shadow, guys. But uh, these things are just doing awesome. This is. Uh, there's one, two, three, four. That's two plants that from the base I split them and single stemmed and then took the first sucker of each plant and that created the two. Same thing with the next plant. The, the main stem and the first sucker. That's what is actually going up there. So that's just those two branches are one plant. One is the first sucker, one is the main stem, and that's what's coming off of those. And this has just been a great way of growing them this year, just suckering them off. Each time the sucker comes out of those little things, break it off. I just throw it down into the plant there to go back into the soil, and uh, it's been good. It really manages the plants well. I don't have to have the cages. They're not hanging all over the place, which you'll see what my other plants <laughs> look like that I did use the cages on. Uh, just chaos. Oh, but this has just been a, a fun way of doing it. And look at the height. And I mean, it's only mid-August. I mean, we've got another two months of growth. These things are just going to be crazy all over the place. And we've started harvesting them. We got some of the, the woodle orange variety we've harvested. We've harvested a bunch of the cherry tomatoes. Um, have not, uh, And we harvested a beefsteak. But uh, none of these golden sun rays yet. I'm really looking forward to them. So the next set, and gosh, they're being blocked by the peppers. You'll see from the backside. So there's a... Uh, a cherry variety here that was a mistake on my part. I mislabeled that plant. It was supposed to be a woodle orange, but it wasn't. So I only got one woodle orange in this whole bank here, which has been one of my favorites. And it's doing pretty well. It's like a lighter colored plant in there. Um, the red calabash. Funky, funky plant. Um, kind of disappointed in it. I mean, it's just the most massive plant in my whole garden out here. It's 10 feet, but it's just doing these funny little 50 cent piece sized tomatoes. Haven't had a ripe one yet. I got a ripe one on the other side. Maybe I'll grab that tonight and taste it. But if any of you guys have ever tried those, uh, comment on it. The red calabash. It's it's weird. I mean, they, I mentioned in my earlier videos, they would drop all their buds, but as the plant got bigger and the taller it is, you'll see up top here, it started holding the buds a lot better, you know, and then it's got a half dozen to eight or ten growing on there. But I don't know how big they're going to get. They look like a pretty small variety. But anyway, 
kind of disappointing unless they're like just super fantastic flavor, but they're still small. <laughs> so cherries, 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 cherries. This was a sweetie variety. Um, they've just been unbelievably awesome. The, they're, they're, they're big. They're not a little sweet 100 variety, even though they're called sweeties. But they uh, they really, really, really pumped out the fruit this year. I mean, they're putting out triple uh, branches with just 15 on every one. Uh, uh, the ones that are missing, obviously, are the ones that we've come out. And I, I don't sit there and let an entire branch get ripe. My wife would never uh, <laughs> go that long without tomatoes. <laughs> I have to come out every night and pick dozens of them. Just pick up the top ripe ones. And uh, But it, they've just been uh, fantastic. I mean, look at the cascade of, of tomatoes coming out of these. So that's been a great variety too. I, I don't, let me see, that wasn't from the Petaluma Seed Bank. That was from a regular seed pack, but uh, again, grown by seed all organically and done well. Uh, my beef steaks, they, this is the uh, just beef steak variety. Uh, they're starting to look really nice. I was getting a little worried about them in the beginning because they weren't putting out much. I planted all these plants so deep. I planted them like 18 to 24 inches deep. You know, I actually lay, lay, laid them along this way. I didn't plant them deep this way. I laid them along, and, you know, literally right, coming right out of the soil was where the first uh, sets of buds were, and I was kind of worried that I was going to lose those bottom tomatoes, and I did on a few of them, but was able to harvest uh, some. I'll, show, I'll try and pop in a picture here of the one I harvested the other day real nice. It was so meaty and no slimy gaps inside of it. I mean, it was just solid meat. It was terrific. But so here's some of the uh, beef steaks. And they're kind of thin as far as the plants go. They're those potato leaf varieties. They're not totally bushy, but they have some huge leaves. They got a little funkiness on them as far as color and all that, but I'm not one for using any sort of uh, pesticides, insecticides, or anything to get rid of. You know, I don't mind a little discoloration on a leaf if it's not affecting my plant. I mean, the plants overall are healthy. You can see them. I mean, they're all hitting that seven-foot bar up there, so they're doing well. Let me take you back behind here. Kind of neat coming back in here. Me and the boys like to come back here in, in the evenings. It's all nice and shaded, and uh, I don't know how well this will film, but you can kind of see it just creates a big wall, which actually kind of throws shade on my other section of the garden here. I threw in some... Uh, uh, some radishes over here. Try and get some late season stuff. I'm not even going to show you much of this garden yet because it kind of looks. Uh, I've plucked a bunch of stuff out of it and I'm reseeding and putting some new stuff in there pretty soon. I got a bunch of uh, uh, germinated uh, bok choy and beets and lettuce over here that I'm going to be putting in this. Then because it, because it's getting shaded, I can hopefully grow some of that stuff that doesn't uh, that can grow fairly well in the shade. But you can see my big wall. It's a uh, just a seven foot wall and it gets that afternoon sun see we got that big old row of uh redwoods over there let me see if i can uh, sequoia redwoods over there and uh sun gets behind that and it'll start throwing shade over here but uh it was fun doing this single stem tomatoes this year it was really neat to see let me see if i can kind of get down there and show you what i did <clears throat> So here's a little O-ring screw eye. I had, from there, I just ran the, the string up. And as the plant grew, I just spiraled the plant around the string. I didn't put the string around the plant, but just kind of took that plant and wrapped it around that string. And up it went. You see the string there? All the way up to the top. And there's that, <laughs> there's that monster. He's just going to be crazy. Yep, and there's my my tree of doom that throws shade on my garden. 
until one o'clock in the afternoon so that really stinks but oh well i live with it look at this here's one of my woodle orange they were just awesome whoops i had one the other day and it had this nice little citrusy twang just i mean right when it hit your tongue it was like citrus boom and just made your mouth water and then instantly turned to sweet tomato flavor it was just it was awesome they're an awesome variety this plant has has produced well this year it's just got some oh sorry big old bunches of <laughs> it's growing some big ones too growing some big old tomatoes so here's one of those little red calabash funny little guy they smell good but i would have loved to have gotten some nice big tomatoes out of this plant so there's that cherry. I mean, it's just got the cascade of cherry tomatoes everywhere. And this guy has just been awesome. This is that uh, golden sun ray. Uh, any of these little spots that you're seeing on here, those are just from me spraying all the tomatoes with the uh, compost tea. Uh, there's not anything wrong with the plant. I mean, this is, and these are the ones that are on this side. The stuff I showed you on the other side were literally on the, oh my God, look at that. <laughs> look at that thing. Wow, that is just crazy. I haven't even seen that one yet. I didn't know he was hiding back there. Uh, little guys down here, my little dripper system dripping in there. Um, that's worked out well this season too. I just, instead of running a little individual string dripper to every single one, I just ran it off the half inch base and just have it dripping near each plant i mean it's going to get over to them sooner or later but this golden sun ray variety i sure am i can't wait to try these i sure hope they're good because boy i sure got a i sure got a bundle of them growing here uh, that was a that was a nice a nice variety it's tough growing tomatoes where i'm at because of uh the shade fog all that stuff but uh there's that big old wall of maters. That's pretty cool. So my potatoes, a little update on the potatoes. They, I don't know. Well, I didn't plant them early enough, that's for sure. I just rolled these bags up a little bit further and put some more soil and kind of buried the stems a little bit more. I know a lot of you have already harvested your potatoes, but slow season here. Well, we'll see what happens. Um, I mean, you can see how deep the soil is there. It's probably a good eight inches deep. And I'm just going to keep burying these things as they grow up. They're growing slow. Like, look at this. It's 6 o'clock in the evening. They're already in shade. My uh, apple tree throws a lot of shade on things over here. So, And, uh, well, might as well give you a little update on those those uh, clones, those little suckers that I did. I did a video on those. I mean, you can kind of see what they turned into. There's that golden sun ray. That's the one I did the little video on. And, uh, you know, obviously I'm not going to use these this year. But you can see how they just turn into their own little plants. If I pop that out of there, there'd be a whole big old root system in there. And that was just a sucker that I took off of one of those plants and just... Uh, got it to grow uh pretty pretty easy way of doing it to get yourself some free plants there's another red calabash i mean i gave away so many plants this year it's not even funny but that was just some leftover stuff that i had and i just brought it out from the side yard i actually forgot about them and they hadn't been getting much sun so i brought them out here so anyway let me uh oops, sorry about that shaky shaky take you back out and show you the other tomatoes that are in the uh the barrels this is my other uh woodle orange right here it's actually taken to the uh to the barrel pretty good i'm just letting it fall over you know i mean that's what it'll do it'll just kind of fall down i didn't want to go any higher than what the cage would do and put in stakes and all that stuff and tie it all up i'm just kind of letting it do what it does but it's got and you can see in a barrel there's they're smaller i mean these are all little golf ball to orange size uh tomatoes this is one that I actually pulled one off of the other day it was a big guy it was about the size of a baseball and it was fantastic but uh i mean it's 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 pumping them out here's one that's starting to get a little bit of color to it but uh so that guy that guy did well i will definitely be growing those again the woodle orange got those from the uh rareseeds.com or the petaluma seed bank woodle w o W-O-O-D-L-E, Woodle Orange. That's been a nice one. <laughs> this thing, oh my gosh. 
it's just it grew seven feet tall and then just flopped over this is that uh it's a cherry tomato and that red calabash i mean it's done nothing with the red calabash i mean you can see these and that's probably the biggest one on there so again disappointing tomato for sure um, it's pumping out the cherries, and they are actually smaller than what's in the main garden. They look like sweet 100s grown in this little thing, but it's funny because in this barrel, boy, they, they sure look ugly. They got the yellow, dried up leaves and stuff, and I've given them just as much fertilizer and everything, but didn't do quite as well as the raised bed. And this was the originally that beefsteak, my only tomato that got diseased, and I yanked him, and this was a cloned little orange that I made from a sucker and uh, planted him in there and he's grown he's going slow he's I'm gonna get some fruit off of him this year but uh, I mean he's, he's he's growing he's doing it he's doing what he does but uh, again that was kind of a, a late plant there and you can see what I do down here I might have mentioned this before anytime I get yellow leaves I just break them off just throw them right down in the bottom there and let them uh, go right back into the soil so that's the tomato garden this year um it did pretty well and that was uh Bo the garden dog you saw just a minute ago but anyway i just wanted to give you guys a little update on how the tomatoes are doing they're doing well there he is <laughs> uh so thanks again for watching guys uh you know hit like subscribe if you want to leave comments if you want to appreciate any feedback i get from you guys i uh, hope you guys are growing this year and i hope your gardens are big and green and uh thanks for watching again guys 707 mr b see you later